In the animal kingdom, gorillas often greet each other with a hug. Certain species of penguins propose to their partner with a pebble. Female lions do all the hunting for their family. Hawkers live with their parents their whole lives. While every family is different and every family is unique, the truth is they're still our fam. Hi everyone, welcome to Transit Online. My name is Carla and today we are in part two of a series called Fam. You know, no, no family is perfect and we see a lot of that in the Bible, which is quite encouraging. I don't know if you remember, but a few months ago we did a series on Joseph's life. It was called Big Picture and his family was crazy. But God had a purpose and somehow it all turned out well. Today we're going to hear another story about a family that's a bit crazy too, a bit messy. And we're going to learn that no matter how imperfect the family is, God can still use it. So let's get started and I'll see you guys after. One time, my family and I went to the mall because my mom wanted to buy some clothes for herself. Whenever we go shopping with my mom, it's always just really boring and maybe you can relate to this because when I was growing up, we didn't have fun things in the mall like a merry-go-round and, and things like that. The only fun thing in the mall was the food court, but we went to the department store with my mom and my older sister was like, hey, let's play hide and go seek. So I'm like, all right, that sounds like an awesome idea. So my, my sister, she's counting, she's, you know, and I have to try and find a place to hide. And I find the most perfect hiding spot. And then it was in the middle of like one of those circular clothes hanging racks. So I had to crawl under and, and I could, I was short enough because so I could stand right in the middle of all of these clothes. And it's a circular clothing rack and it was just the most epic hiding spot you could ever be in. But then I started getting worried. I was like, well, maybe this is so good that my sister's not gonna be able to find me. So then I start kind of like shifting the clothes around and pushing it around um, just to give my sister a clue as to where exactly I was hiding. So I'm like pushing and and then I noticed like this really cool like wave pattern started to happen with all of these clothes. So I'm just like pushing and going with the motions, you know, of, of this wave. And then all of a sudden the clothes rack just like tips over and not only does the clothes rack tip over, but the clothes rack like next to this clothes rack also tips over. And I'm like crawling out, like what just happened? And my mom is standing like totally mortified that we have just embarrassed her as a family. Like it was, it, it was pretty bad. But maybe you can relate because your family has had a few less than perfect moments of their own. Maybe like me, you feel like your family situation is a lot messier than other people's. But can I let you in on a secret? We all feel this way at some point. You aren't alone. This is true for every single one of our families because no family is a perfect family. Maybe there's a lot of tension in your home. Some families slam doors, argue a lot, or yell. Some families have a lot going on, but never actually talk about it. You just sense it. You feel the stress in the room when your family talks about money, vacation, holidays, step-siblings, or any number of things. And that tension makes your house a stressful place to live. Or maybe you've discovered some things about people in your family that you wish you didn't know. Secrets about relationships, affairs, legal problems, or bad decisions. Secrets that have hurt people and caused problems in your home. Maybe for you, the problem in your family is something like abuse or neglect or addiction or abandonment. You may feel really alone in those situations. And if you are, I wanna encourage you today to speak up, to open up to an adult here like you're a group leader who can help you navigate that in a healthy way. Or maybe your family is facing other big problems. You're dealing with things like divorce, remarriage, a parent who left and never looked back, siblings who are always in trouble. Maybe it's even something like illness or death. Things like that can certainly leave your family feeling less than perfect. Honestly, no matter what it is that you're dealing with at home, I think that's true for all of us. That in some way or another, no family is a perfect family. What's difficult about this is that sometimes we think that nothing good could ever come from an imperfect family. 
that God couldn't use us if we come from a family like that. But as we'll see today, that couldn't be further from the truth. Here's the thing about the Bible. Some of the people in it are kind of messed up. Their lives weren't perfect, and a lot of their families weren't either. In fact, there's one family in the Bible whose story I love. Not only was their family totally dysfunctional, but God still did big things through them. I think the same can be true for us. The story starts with a man named Abraham. God promised Abraham a lot of descendants, and he promised to use that family in a big way. Pretty cool, right? Abraham had a son named Isaac, and Isaac had two sons. And Isaac had two sons twins named Jacob and Esau. All right, Jacob and Esau. And even though they were twins, these two guys were very different from each other. They looked different. <laughs> they acted different. They had different interests. And all of these differences caused a lot of drama between these two boys. Now, Here's where it gets crazy. Even though Jacob and Esau were twins, Esau was born first, which was a really big deal. For one, being firstborn meant that Esau got the birthright. Ta-da! He would be in charge of the family wealth and property when their father Isaac died. And second, being the firstborn meant that Esau not only got the birthright, but he also got the blessing. So that meant that he received the family's future wealth and prosperity. And since this family came from Abraham, Esau's blessing also included all of the promises that God had made to Abraham. Promises to make their name great, to do big things with their family, and to bless all the people through this one family. As you can imagine, Jacob, the younger twin, didn't love the situation because as the second born, he wasn't going to get the birthright or the blessing. Now, their mother, Rebecca, favored Jacob over Esau. So together, Jacob and his mom, they came up with a plan. First, Jacob convinced Esau to promise the birthright to him. And honestly, it didn't take much convincing. Esau was starving! So Jacob offered him some food in exchange for the birthright. That doesn't seem like an even trade to me, but haven't we all made some crazy decisions when we're hungry? <laughs> With the birthright now his, all Jacob needed to do was trick his father Isaac into giving the blessing to him instead of to his brother Esau. Now because Isaac was older and towards the end of his life, his eyesight wasn't so great. Jacob's mom helped disguise Jacob as his brother Esau so that Isaac would give him Esau's blessing. And here's the crazy thing, it worked. <gasps> Isaac gave Jacob the blessing that was promised to Esau. Of course, when Esau came in a few moments later, he had no idea what his brother Jacob had done. When their father Isaac realized what had happened, look at how it played out. When Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me, me too, my father. But he said, your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. Esau said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? This is the second time he's taken advantage of me. He took my birthright and now he's taken my blessing. Then he asked, haven't you reserved any blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, I have made him Lord over you and made all his relatives his servants. And I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? Esau said to his father, do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. Trust me, it only got worse from there. After some heated conversation, we come to find out that Esau planned to kill his younger brother, Jacob. Their mother sent Jacob away to protect him, breaking up their family completely. What's the point of this insane story? Well, it's that the story didn't just stop there. Sure, this family was a mess, but in spite of all of that, God still had an important future planned for them. He had promised something great to Abraham, 
And a messed up family wasn't going to change that. Their family didn't have to be perfect for God to use them. Hundreds of years after this had happened, the writer of the book in the Bible called Hebrews looked back on the story. And there, the writer didn't talk about the mess or the bad choices or the pain in this family. Instead, they wrote this. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. Isaac did eventually pass on a blessing to Esau. It wasn't the same as the original blessing that Jacob stole, but it was something. It was an act of faith. Even though there was a lot of really bad moments in their family, the very act of Isaac passing on a blessing to his family was an act of faith. It was a way of saying, I believe what God is about to do in our family and that it's true. I believe he has something good for us and in our future. God had a plan for this imperfect family. And even in the middle of so much pain and so many problems, they trusted him to come through. And that's what I want for each of us. You see, your family doesn't have to be perfect for God to use it. Seeing how God didn't forget about a less than perfect family back then can give you hope that he'll do the same for your family today. In fact, for a lot of you, the most hopeful thing about this lesson is that no family is a perfect family, but God works anyways. Being imperfect isn't the end of the story, which is a huge relief. You don't have to be perfect for God to use you, and your family members don't have to be perfect for God to use them. You don't have to come from a perfect family to be able to do amazing things. Here's what I want you to try. First, choose to believe God is working anyway. Your family will mess up. They aren't perfect. Your siblings will borrow your stuff without asking. Your stepmom will yell at you. Your dad will disappoint you. No matter what your family looks like, they aren't going to be perfect. The next time that happens, instead of getting frustrated and shutting down, have faith that God will somehow use your family anyways, that he's working for your good, that he's with you in the mess of your family, and that he can still use your family for his good. And second, stay connected to your family. Most of us tend to wanna avoid our families when things get really messy. We stay in our room, we put our earbuds in, we keep our eyes glued to the screen. We just ignore everyone and everything. But what if, instead, you made the choice to stay connected? What if you tried to talk to your mom or hang out with your grandpa or forgive your siblings? Trust me, you don't wanna miss out on being part of the incredible story that God is writing in your family. So this week, Try to stay connected to your family, even if you don't feel like it. Now, here's the thing. For some of you, I know that staying connected to your family isn't the best option. In fact, it's not an option at all, because the stuff that makes your family imperfect is more than just frustrations or annoyances. It's things like abuse, neglect, alcohol, and drugs. It's the kind of stuff that makes staying connected to your family simply not safe. If that's you, I wanna encourage you to instead connect with someone who is like family. Open up to a group leader, a teacher, a neighbor, a coach, or any trusted adult in your life who cares about you. Connect with them about what's happening in your home so that they can help you take the next best step. I know that may be scary, but adults like your group leader are here for you for that very purpose, to connect with you when you need it the most. Remember, your family doesn't have to be perfect for God to use it. God uses imperfect people and imperfect families for his good. I believe that's true in my family, and I definitely believe it can be true in your family too. Now, as you head to group, hopefully it's comforting to know that you aren't the only one who has an imperfect family. That maybe the person sitting next to you has a story similar to yours. It's normal to feel like you're the only one going through something. But what's great about your group is that you can connect with someone who knows how you feel. And in the process of doing that, you get a chance to learn about all the things God is doing in your lives. As you head a group, I want you to think about this question. What's one great thing you hope God will do in your family? I hope you guys enjoyed that talk. Isn't it encouraging that our families don't have to be perfect for God to use it? It sure is for me. Let's talk about it more in our online small group. Let's talk about what we're thankful for about our family and how we can appreciate our family even more. I hope to see you guys there. Join us again next week for part three of FAM. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye.